Welcome back to Benny Ice Tech, guys. Today's fun topic is PowerShell. Now, for those of you that's not too familiar with PowerShell, this is actually something that comes out on both the client operating system and the server operating system. It's included by default. Now, this is a very advanced, sophisticated scripting slash command line tool, which can do just about anything. Even though it can do just about anything that you can do via the GUI, there are going to be times when you might need to give it a little helping hand. And that's where these CMD lets or modules comes into play. It's basically going to go and give your PowerShell additional functionality. So why do we need to go and do this for Teams? Well, if you're going to go to PowerShell and type in the PowerShell commands, which are for Teams, PowerShell is actually going to give you an error in most cases, at least by default, it will. And in short, this is just because it doesn't actually understand the command. You need to help it along. So what you're going to go and do is, is install a module, which is now for Microsoft Teams. And this is going to give you PowerShell additional functionality. So I suppose if you want to dumb it down, it's going to make it smarter. It's going to make your PowerShell smarter and it's going to help it understand when you type in a PowerShell command, which is now specific to Teams. This applies to a lot of cloud platforms. It applies to Teams, SharePoint, Exchange. There's a lot of platforms that, yes, you can manage them via PowerShell, but not by default. You might need to install a module first before you can actually go and manage these platforms. It's worth noting that if and when you should go and install one of these modules, this is not normally included in the courses, preferably try and install them as the administrator. So run your PowerShell as the administrator. Right click on PowerShell, run as admin. Once you've installed these modules, I can't tell you how many times this has happened to me, remember to restart that machine. If it's a virtual machine, same applies. Restart the machine. For some reason I've seen, it doesn't always kick in until you actually restart the physical machine or the virtual machine. All right, so with all of that being said, what are we gonna be doing in this lesson? We're gonna be installing the PowerShell module. And once we've actually done that, we're gonna be exploring some of the other PowerShell seam lists that we've got available. So if you guys are new to this channel, please give the video a like. Please consider subscribing. Remember to click on the notification bell so that you can be informed when I release new videos. And I think with all of that being said, let's jump in and show you guys how we can go about installing this PowerShell module. All right, guys, I'm currently on my virtual machine, reason being because I don't want to go and install the PowerShell module for Teams on my own PC. So I'm using a virtual machine in the cloud right now. So first things first, we need to go and open PowerShell. So I'm going to start off by just typing it in here at the bottom. There we go, PowerShell. Now I need to remember to run this as administrator. As I've said earlier, there's a good chance it's not going to work unless you run it as administrator. Also, once we're completely done, remember to restart the machine, virtual or physical, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to right click on this puppy, run as administrator. All right, I'll try and zoom in here for you guys. Now, what we need to type in first is set dash execution policy. All right, so what this is going to basically go and do is, not that you need to know, this is just going to prevent us from getting blocked or restricted when we try and run any of our PowerShell scripts. We don't want that to happen. So we're just going to start things off by running this small little script that says set execution policy to unrestricted. Smash the enter button. If this message pops up, it's basically just asking if you want to proceed, if this is going to apply to just once. The next thing that you're basically going to be running, or is this going to be permanent? I'm just going to say yes to all. Uh, although I said I suppose I could do that. I'm just going to say A to yes to all. So A for yes to all. You can go and press Y too. Y should also do the trick. All right. So now we're going to at least attempt to try to install the PowerShell module for Microsoft Teams. So what you need to go and do to install the module is type in install dash module space dash name space Microsoft Teams. Now where it's going to get this from is it's actually included in your operating system, believe it or not. So there's a very large repository built into your Windows 10 operating system. That's where I am right now. And when you go and basically type this command, it's going to go and extract that and install that onto your machine. So it's basically lying dormant on your machine, just sleeping there until you basically go and wake it up. So I'm going to smash the enter button. Let's see what happens. All right, so this might take a few seconds to pop up on your site after you've pressed enter for installing the module. So if it takes a few seconds, just be patient, that's normal. 
Should you get this next menu that pops up that says new get provider is required to continue, just press Y and continue. So just press the Y key on your keyboard, press enter. All right, so after pressing enter at the new get provider, you're going to get this little message that says untrusted repository. You are installing the modules from an untrusted repository, which is kind of funny considering this is actually my own machine. So it's your choice really, as long as you just at least press Y, but I would suggest you just press A, just you know, yes for everything. So I'm going to go and press A for everything. So Y would also work. You can see here at the bottom left, it says Y is yes and A is yes to all. I'm just going to say yes to all because it's a virtual machine. So what do I care? It's not like I can break my machine. All right, boys and girls, we have just installed the latest version of Microsoft Teams PowerShell module from the PowerShell Gallery repository. So give yourself a pat on the back. That wasn't too difficult, now was it? So now if I were to go and use PowerShell to try and type Teams related commands, it's actually going to understand me. It's going to know what I'm talking about. Now, yes, technically I can manage my Teams, which is in the cloud. But even though it's going to recognize the commands, my PowerShell is not going to know which teams it needs to connect to in the cloud. So from this point forward, you need to actually go and connect to your company or your personal teams environment first. So that's going to be the first step. Before you can go and type any PowerShell commands, you need to actually go and connect to your teams environment in the cloud. Otherwise, your PowerShell is not going to know to which teams environment it needs to connect to. And if you're going to try and apply some form of settings, you know, whether it's calling policies, meeting policies, or just team settings in general via PowerShell, your PowerShell will not know which team's environment to apply this to. So you need to go and connect it first. And lastly, it's also just to make sure that you're actually allowed to connect to the specific team's environment. I mean, how do they know you're not some sort of scoundrel that's trying to hijack or trying to intercept the communication here? So to avoid that from happening, you need to prove that you are in fact the owner of this team's environment, or at the very least that you're an employee or a member of this team's environment that's authorized to go and work on it. All right, guys, there was a bit of a time lapse. I went ahead and opened myself a brand spanking new PowerShell window. And this is because I would like to show you guys how to actually go and connect to your specific team's environment once you've installed the Microsoft Teams PowerShell module. Now, Obviously, this command that I'm about to go and type is not going to work if you have not installed the Teams PowerShell module. So basically, every, every command that I'm going to be typing from this point forward will not work unless you've installed the PowerShell module for Teams. So that is absolutely required. You need to go and do that first. Once you've done it, that's that. You don't have to go and do it again. You only do it once, then it's done. Once you've got it installed, please type the following command. Connect dash Microsoft Teams. So what this command is going to go and do is, ideally, it's supposed to pop up a little window now and ask you for your credentials to your Microsoft Teams environment. This is just to prove once again that you are an owner or a member of that Teams environment, that you're not up to some sort of shenanigans, you know, up to no good, so to speak. You need to prove that you are the owner of that Teams environment or that you at least are a team member or an employee that's authorized to go and connect to it. So I'm going to go ahead and press enter. All right, it popped up. You guys might not be able to see this in the video, but that actually took about two to five minutes to pop up on my side. So it could possibly pop up immediately on your side. It could take up to five minutes to actually pop up this little window. As long as you don't get an error, you're good to go. So what you need to go and do now is you need to provide your live ID that's associated with your subscription, which is in the cloud, specifically the one that's associated with your teams in this case. So you need to provide some sort of credentials to an admin account of some kind, some sort of account that's got a role assigned to it that, give, that gives you permissions to go and manage your Teams environment. It needs to be a Teams administrator, a Teams communications administrator, Teams communications engineer, Teams communications specialist, or Teams device administrator. We discussed those, I think it was in lesson four perhaps in this course. So I'm going to go ahead and type in my email address here. I'm going to blur it out, obviously, for you guys. All right, there's my email address. Let me go to the next menu, which is probably going to be my password. There 
And there we go, boys and girls. As you can see, my subscription has just been added. I've just logged on. Obviously, I'm going to be blurring out uh, some of that email domain. I don't want you guys to be able to see that, but that should be good enough. You guys should be able to see that is how you go and connect. So simply just go and install the Teams Microsoft module. And once you've done that, go and type in the connect command as I've just done. And there you go. Now, from this point forward, it's just a matter of typing your usual good old fashioned Teams PowerShell commands. And you should be able to go and manage your Teams via PowerShell if you happen to know the commands. Now, if you don't know the PowerShell commands for Microsoft Teams, don't feel blue. There's a lot of people out there, including people that's got 20 years of experience that don't know PowerShell. So a lot of us, including myself at times, I just find myself going to Google or a search engine of your choice. You can go to YouTube, run a search for the PowerShell script that you're looking for, and you can literally go and copy paste in some cases. It's simply a matter of why reinvent the wheel when the wheel has already been invented. Just go take those scripts. Sometimes you can literally use them as is. Other times you just need to go and tweak a name here, maybe an IP address there, and there you go. It's gonna make your life so much easier. All right, so just as a little extra, I wanna show you, or at least I wanna try and show you guys what it looks like when we view some of the other modules. So let's just type in an extra command here before, before we finish things off. Get module, which is gonna get me the modules that's available. At least that's what it's supposed to do. And check it out. There's a few modules that we've got available. So basically, when your sign in was successful, several information about the sign in user and the tenant are displayed. So, to confirm the Microsoft Teams module is loaded correctly, just enter the following command that I just typed in there at the top, the one that says get module, and that's going to basically show you whether your stuff was installed correctly. All right, so to get an overview of the available Teams partial CM delete, uh, which is for Microsoft Teams, you need to go and type in the following command. So this is going to give you an overview of the available CMD lets that we actually have available. So just type in git dash command space dash module space Microsoft Teams. Now, wasn't that a big ass list? So that is a pretty darn big list, I must say myself. All right, and then lastly, guys, there's one last uh, command you can go and type in. This is not compulsory. It's purely optional just to help you if you're struggling with PowerShell. So the get-help CMD lit is used to explore the available CMD lids. Kind of, kind of like what we're doing right now. For example, to get more information about how to create a team with PowerShell, enter the following CMD lit. So I'm just going to scroll up a little bit here so you guys can actually see it. Get dash help space new dash team do you want to run update help the update help scene deal it downloads the most current help files for Microsoft PowerShell modules and installs them on your computer so if you need that if that is something you would like press Y otherwise just press no so that's the last thing I want to show you guys I think most people will not be using that very last command it's just something I felt that Hell, you know, why not add it for you guys since I'm busy here anyway. All right, guys, I believe we concluded this PowerShell lesson. So we explained briefly what PowerShell actually does. We explained that it actually does come by default with the client and the server operating system. We explained to you guys that you need to go and install this to be able to actually do something on Teams in the cloud. You're not going to be able to go and do something on Teams by default. You need to install the module first. That's going to give your PowerShell additional functionality. And once we've done that, we actually went ahead and even connected to our Teams environment in the cloud. And as an added extra, I even showed you guys all the different CMD lets we get. So I hope this has been informative for you guys. If it was, please give the video a like. Please subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell. Otherwise, you will not know when the new episode comes out. And I'll see you guys next time on episode 8. Bye, guys. If you love me, let me know. Don't let me hey. mm -hmm.